Hold on. I'm texting. I'm texting Joey. I have my do not disturb on, but for some reason it's still coming through and he keeps calling me. So I just texted him and I told him to stop calling me. Okay. <laughs> there we go. See, we're 16 again. So Brittany, I guess I'll take you back to the beginning. Brittany and I, we met uh, at Extreme Ice, at my parents' ice rink. I did the little concession stand and I made French fries. And I'm telling you that guy, like, he ate more French fries than any person I ever knew. And I was like, okay, like this guy just, he's loading up on carbs right now, you know? Okay. So he'd come back all the time and um, we'd talk and yeah. It'd be because he would look at the schedule for when you would be there and make a point of always being there himself, yeah. apparently, right? He told me that later on. I didn't actually know he was looking at my schedule and he admitted this. My sister introduced me to her once and then we met again at a Christmas party there. And so then I was 16, she was 15. And so we dated for a couple months and then she friend zoned me because I was the most awkward 16 year old you've ever met. Cause all I did was raced, like, that was and, it. And what I heard on that front was you were very energetic in phone calls, but then yeah. like incredibly quiet in oh, she person. Was hot. <laughs> and I locked right up. <laughs> you gotta know. So I was I was homeschooled from from third grade on, and so my interaction with people was always at the racetrack, which was mainly guys, right? And so I was comfortable in that situation. But I never saw any girls my age, like ever, right? So she was like the first girl I ever really talked to, and so I would lock up. I'd just get nervous and stop. So. Eventually she friends on me, which I don't really blame her. Looking back at it, I wouldn't date me either. I understand your way of uh, trying to hit on her was uh, pull a chair out from yeah. under her yeah. at uh, well, uh, a company party. I broke her butt too, but <laughs> 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 well, that was, a, that was our, our break the ice moment is that she, she was going to sit down right in front of me and it just seemed like the perfect opportunity to yank the chair out and she went down. She wasn't impressed. <laughs> Got her to talk to me though. <laughs> and I was like, okay, like this is, this is awkward, you know? And he said, well, I'll make it up to you. And I was like, okay. And he said that he would take me to the ice rink that night and we went skating and it was all closed down. And it was the whole, you know, Adam Sandler moment on the ice with the lights down and the music and the whole thing. So take me to the proposal that started at the Hibachi restaurant. <laughs> Boy, you got all the, the background. Okay. so. Yeah, so um, we dated for a couple of years and I got a ring for her, but I'm a car guy. And she was driving around this old Jeep Cherokee that was gonna break down any second. I actually did a couple times, it's a piece of crap. And so her dream car was the T-Birds, like the 04, 05 T-Birds, like the, the ones that usually grandma's driving around. Uh, and she loved them. I said, well, perfect. I can find one of these. So I went on Auto Trader. I found a, a seafoam green T-Bird. And I thought, perfect. I, a car and the ring would be really cool. It's more like my style. So. And she had no idea. No. No, because I mean, it started off just a normal night. It was raining. It was like a Wednesday night, rainy night. It, was, uh, it happened to be uh, 11, 12, 13 was the date, um, which I didn't realize it was that date until that, that, that morning. And I was like, I'm going to do it today. Like I had everything and it was 11, 12, 13. I thought, cool day. I'm going to do it today. We pulled up and it was dark and there was Christmas lights all up on the trees. And there was this 2004 T-Bird, which uh, that's my dream car. I love it. It is like a mint green color. He calls it a granny car, but I'm a granny at heart. And then he surprised me and asked me to marry him. I understand uh, you've lost the wedding ring on a I couple did. of occasions. Well, I'm on number two. And the first time, what happened? Oh, the first time we were, uh, our honeymoon was in Costa Rica and we were uh, kayaking or whatever, white water rafting and uh, I flipped. <laughs> flipped. It came back up, no ring. <laughs> so um, it was it it's to be actually devastating. funny because there's pictures of it. So it had to be like a place where apparently a lot of people wreck and they had a photographer there. And it has me going down the waterfall before with it on my hand. And then it shows me flipping over and it's like shot by shot. <laughs> and then I come back up and I'm like excited that I'm not going to the hospital in Costa Rica. And I have no ring on in that picture. So it, it's gone. It's gone. Like there's 
not even a chance of trying to find it. Didn't like another time, like when you were at a race? Oh, uh, I did. Okay. Yeah, I did in Phoenix. We won the race, and at some point, you're cheering, you're yelling, or something, and it flew off. And someone found it for me in Victory Lane, which I'm lucky to have it. So, I'm on. Uh, I'm on the backup. This is the backup car.